Coming up on today's edition of Trailblazer Weekly, the football team made history on Saturday with a monumental win over number six, Colorado School of Mines. We'll chat with quarterback Michael Sanders to break it all down a little bit later in the show. Plus, the volleyball team is still in a roll and advanced to the RMAC Tournament semifinals. We caught up with head coach Robin Felder and middle blocker Lauren Gamel after last night's win to preview this weekend. It's all coming up on today's show. Trailblazer Weekly starts now. inside the CEC TV studios on the Community Education Channel, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, and the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page with another edition of Trailblazer Weekly. I'm Carrick Segmuller, and joining me as always is Jason Ball. Of course I am here, Carrick, and can you believe it? Already November. We'll be eating turkey two weeks. Can't believe it's already here, Carrick, and it's a great show today. I'm excited to be here. It's another edition of Trailblazer Weekly. And we're going to jump right into our weekend recap, although you right you are, Drayson, that it is just two weeks until Thanksgiving tomorrow. And we'll talk more about that. We're actually not going to have a show um, the, uh, the week of Thanksgiving. It'll be a hard-earned break for all of us here on Trailblazer Weekly. But until then, we uh, are going to the show start today. Our weekend recap. Slash senior day over number six, Colorado School of Mines. Yeah, was both senior day and homecoming. As we continue to talk about this. A day it was. Uh, you and I both had the opportunity to be there and to help call that game. And it's a game, honestly, that I will never forget. 52-45 win for the Trailblazers over number six ranked Colorado School of Mines. The Trailblazers set three records and tie three others. Those records that they set, uh, passing yards, single game passing yards, uh, combined total offense yards in a game, and uh, single game receiving yards for a single receiver, and then tying the single game passing touchdowns record, the receiving touchdowns record, and Trayvon Watson with his interception in the fourth quarter, tying the Dixie State career interceptions uh, record. Just a fantastic atmosphere, an exciting game, and the Trailblazers, it was back and forth. It was tied for quite some time in the second half, and they find a way to get it done and this season, after a two-game losing streak, it feels like it's right back on track, and they'll have another opportunity to make more history uh, this week in Alamosa, Colorado, to take on Adams State, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. But uh, what a game it was. Like I said, you and I were both in the booth for that game, and I think we talked about after the game, we just said it's a game that we will never forget to be there and, and be part of history. Yeah, I mean, to say it was an unbelievable game, Kerry, I feel like that's an understatement. This was just an absolutely incredible football game and experience. And, and, you know, the cool thing about it was you and I were just sitting in the booth for like an hour after the, sh the game had ended, just talking about what our feelings were and how, how just incredible it was to be a part of that atmosphere. Obviously, it was an, an incredible win for the football team. They played excellent in, in all aspects of the game. You know, we sat on the pregame of that uh, before the game. They had to have played a perfect game in order to win that, and they just about did play a perfect game, in my opinion at least. They, they had an excellent game plan coming in. They executed offensively. They, uh, they didn't allow their defense to give up big plays like they had previously in the season uh, in, in a few uh, different occasions. Michael Sanders was, was really the, the key for them offensively, obviously, as the quarterback uh, threw for 553 yards, an unbelievable outing for him. And he seemed like he was just very, very comfortable uh, not only in the pocket, but finding multiple different receivers. Obviously, you see, uh, you know, Dewan Dancer had a huge game. Uh, Xavier Smith had a really good game as well, a few important catches. Um, there was just a lot, th a lot of things going correctly for the Trailblazers in that game. And, and like I said, to say it was un un an unbelievable game seems like an understatement to me. Yeah, just, in some ways, there just aren't words to, to describe what we witnessed, and we're really not overstating this. It would be difficult to do that. Uh, I, I'm comfortable in saying it. I said on the broadcast on Saturday that this is the, the biggest win, and that's why I used the word monumental in, in the opener of today's show. 
Uh, Dixie State had never defeated a team in the, in the AFCA top 10 before until Saturday. Just the second win over a top 25 team never had defeated a team in the, in the AFCA top 10 uh, until Saturday with the win over number six, Colorado School of Mines. There's a lot to talk about in this game, so we're going to stick with it uh, as there's not as much going on in Trailblazer Athletics right now anyway until till basketball gets going here uh, later this weekend. Uh, so we've got a extra time to talk about this, and I want to break it down. You mentioned that the Trailblazers had a great plan uh, going into this game, and they really did, and they executed that game plan uh, both offensively and defense. Specifically, offensively, though, uh, they knew coming into the game that Colorado School of Mines had one of the best run defenses in the country. Dixie State has been having a little trouble getting that run game going for one reason or the other anyway, so they tailored an offensive game plan around Mike Michael Sanders and, and Dewan Dantzler and Isaiah Wooden and Xavier Smith and Devin Osborne and they were able to go out and like I said threw for 553 yards and this was a Colorado School of Mines team giving up you know between 250 to 300 yards through the air already and Dixie State was able to exploit that they took advantage of that it did look though at the start of the game Colorado School of Mines had the opening kickoff and they marched down the field and scored a touchdown on their first drive of the game. And you thought for just a minute, okay, here we go. Uh, they had their way offensively, what's gonna happen? Dixie State never even had to get the ball offensively to tie the game up. Trayvon Watson, 92 yards to the house in, in a play that you know seemed a little bit slower than most kickoff returns for a touchdown. It just, the play continued to go and go and go, but he was able to have just enough uh, momentum to to dance out of a couple tackles inside the 10 and get into the end zone and for me that was a huge turning point early in this game that kind of took some of the wind out of the sails of Colorado School of Mines early on and it showed that Dixie State was going to compete and they would not be pushed around on their home field. I agree. I mean, I think the the, the return by uh, Trayvon Watson kind of sent the message to Colorado School of Mines that hey, we're here to compete. We're not going to come in and, and do what you've done to the rest of the conference and the rest of the teams you've played this season. We're going to compete. It's our senior day. It's our homecoming. And, and obviously, you know, they did just that in the win. But and obviously, also, how good was Trayvon Watson? He was unbelievable. He played a tremendous game. We had him on the show a few weeks ago, and he played an unbelievable game. Not only the, the touchdown return off the kickoff, he had an interception late in the game. He, had, he was flying all over the field, and he really anchored that defense. Let's not forget... The Colorado School of Mines came into this game as the number two ranked passing offense in the entire country mm -hmm. and the number one offense overall in the country. And that defense played very, very well. Obviously, if you look at the stats, you know, Cameron Mayberry, their All-American running back, he had a tremendous game. So you obviously kind of think, oh, well, that's kind of expected. But if you look at the receiving core, they didn't allow those that dynamic receiving core to get the amount of yards that they're used to getting. Obviously, Riley Hoff had a pretty good game. Yeah. But other than that, the Brody Oliver, they're all American uh, wide receiver as well. He left early, left with an injury, but they contained him for most of that game before that injury, and they played extremely well. They basically said, we're going to let Cameron Mabry run for as many yards as he wants, but we're not going to let them get out and pass the ball on us, and that's what they did. And I, that's really where, where the, the game was won for me was with that tremendous defense, obviously, with the offense to counter it. Yeah, you, you can't t just talk about the offense in this game. Obviously, the Trailblazer offense was huge, uh, but this Dixie State defense was huge as well. And if you look at the stats, uh, Dixie State, there, there was a few tweaks that had to be made after this game, uh, and so it's a little different than it was on the post-game show of the broadcast. Dixie State actually ended up being outgained in this contest, but the Trailblazer defense made huge plays when it needed to. We talked in the pregame show about needing to force some turnovers. How about four of them? That'll do the trick. Forced two fumbles, or at least recovered two fumbles, and had two huge interceptions. You mentioned Trayvon Watson, and then what we, I think, decided on was our play of the game. Uh, Abraham Reinhardt getting the interception after the missed field goal. I mean, the momentum, it seemed like, had left the Dixie State sideline. Who knows what happens if that game goes to overtime, but Dixie State is able to, to win this game because Reinhardt gets the interception, and, and then the Trailblazer have another shot offensively, and Michael Sanders did what he'd been doing all game long and just dropped that thing right in the basket. And Xavier Smith, probably one of the easiest catches he'll have all year. I mean, he was on the run, yeah, but he beat his 
defender, and he was wide open in the end zone, made the catch, and was able to just keep running and, and you know, had some fun with it afterward. The, the arms were, were out as he was running back down the track, you know, kind of looking like, a, you know, a bird flying or an airplane with the wings extended and just having fun with it, and, and why not? And, and, the, and Coach McClure, uh, you were right there uh, just yards away from him when he got the, the, the water bath and, and got the water dumped on him, and they, they, they lifted him up on their shoulders. And, and why not? Biggest win in the Division II era of this program, so why not celebrate it? The tough part, and, and, and we'll talk to, to Michael Sanders about this as well from a player's perspective, how, how do you go from, from that high on Saturday to having to turn around and then go play one more game with more history on the line. That, that they'll figure it out, they'll be okay, but an opportunity to get to seven wins for this Trailblazer team on Saturday, which they've never done before, and which you know maybe a couple of weeks ago, after two straight losses, we were sitting here thinking, you know, can they get to seven wins? And they, they turned around on all of us and said, yes, we can, and yes, we will. And what a huge win over Colorado School of Mines, and, and they played a great game as well. Uh, Michael Sanders should note, um, Armac Player of the Week for the second time this season. Um, we've got him up for a couple of National Player of the Week awards as well. We'll see what happens as, as the week progresses. Dewan Dantzler, 11 receptions, 241 yards, three touchdowns, single game receiving yards record, tying the single game touchdown reception record as well. So congratulations to all of Dixie State. Coach McClure and his staff had a great game plan, and the Trailblazers were able to execute that game plan on Saturday. So congratulations. To them, um, huge game, but uh, volleyball has the opportunity to make history as well as they continue to play in their first RMAC tournament. You betcha, Carrick. And uh, they, they beat UC Colorado Springs last night, and they earned a berth into the RMAC tournament semifinals with that win. Uh, you know, it was a, a very good game uh, match overall, and they won the first two sets, got out to an early lead, and then, you know, they dropped that third set. But you got to kind of expect that from a, a competitive standpoint. You know, the, the, better, the UC Colorado Springs backed up against the wall, but eventually the Trailblazers do come out and win that fourth and decisive set to take the 3-1 victory. They now uh, take the long trip to Golden, Colorado, and will uh, be, you know, play at the host school, Colorado School of Mines where they will match up with uh, Colorado Mesa, a big rivalry game as well, a team that they've beat twice already in this season. But we, you know, we talked to Coach Robin Feller. We'll get to that interview later on in the show. We talked to her last night, and she basically said you can't overlook a team like that even yeah. though you've beat them twice in a row. And that's going to be a really good matchup, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, you talk about it a lot. It seems like maybe we talk about it more in basketball too because that's one of the sports where you play each other you know, a couple different times. That's the other sport where you play each other a couple different times, and then again maybe in the conference tournament. Or should you both make the conference tournament? It's tough to beat a team three times in the same season. You you sweep the regular singles the reg, the, the regular season series with the team, and then you got to go and match up with them in a semifinal and conference tournament, and that's not always the easiest of tasks. Colorado Mesa, you bet your bottom dollar, will be ready for this game. Dixie State will be as well, but Colorado Mesa will will look at it and say, you know, we want that conference tournament title, a team that feels like, you know, we just dropped a couple of games here and there that we felt like we should have won or we could have been up there, you know, sharing the, the, the conference championship with, with Dixie and, and with Mines as well. So they'll be they'll be ready to go. Both Dixie State and Colorado Mesa in the four and the five spot respectively in the South Central Regional. I think we're probably safe to say that regardless of the outcome of that match on Friday, both of those teams are probably in. But Dixie State can do a lot for itself in the South Central Regional, regardless of whether they win the RMAC tournament or not, with a win on Friday over Colorado Mesa. Uh, they've got some of the, the best you know, defense, middle blockers, attackers in, in the conference. So it will be a tough game. But as we've seen Dixie State do all season long, they think they'll be up for the challenge. And they're backed by uh, the defender of the year in Lauren Gamble, like yeah. you mentioned, in the open. And uh, that's been the key for the Trailblazers all season long is they're, they're anchored defensively and they're very tough to beat, uh, especially when they have all things clicking like that. Also got to mention uh, co-coach of the year, head coach Robin Felder. She's done a, done a tremendous job all season coaching these, uh, these girls in the first, um, the first season in the RMAC. And it, it's been a tremendous showing for the Trailblazers. They're off to, a, you know, they've had a tremendous season, obviously, going into the RMAC tournament semifinals. I like their chances going forward, especially to finish out the year. If you ask me, you can drop the co from that. Uh, no slide against Colorado Mesa. I, I just don't see how you beat a team twice during the year and then you have to share the, uh, the coach of the year 
uh, title. But uh, and that's Water Under the Bridge at this point. We're excited for her. It's her third such award, twice in the Pac West, and now in the first season in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. You come in and uh, and you're the coach of the year, and it and what a leader for this team to be able to do exciting things. They've already set history this year, uh, the most uh, regular season wins in a season, and now they've tied the most single season wins. And with just one more win, uh, it'll be a season that. They've never achieved that many wins before. They're already in a situation where at just four losses right now, um, you're pretty much, you're, you're guaranteed to, to have the least amount of losses you've ever had in a single season. Uh, the fewest losses, the previous was seven. Dixie State's at four. So you figure uh, they're gonna play at least one game in the RMAC tournament and at least one game in the South Central Regional too. Uh, and so they, they will not uh, surpass that mark. So congratulations to, to the volleyball team. Uh, should mention, along with those awards, uh, Lauren Gamel with her Defender of the Year award joins Megan Trainer on the first team all RMAC. Second team honors Sid Brandon and Mallory Marshall. So congratulations to those players as well. We're running short here in the segment, but do just want to quickly mention uh, before we go to break, uh, the women's soccer team closing its season last Friday in the RMAC semifinals in Golden, Colorado. It seems like Mines is hosting just about everything in the fall. It was a blustery day in Golden, and it was Dixie State taking on the host, Colorado School of Mines, and it was a one nothing loss to the Ore Diggers. A kind of a, what I call the quirky goal uh, midway through the second half. I think it was really windy. I think the wind had a little something to play with that. Uh, Dixie State keeper tried to clear a ball, and it just kind of squirted weirdly away and it was just kind of a, a giveaway. Went right to the to the mines forward, and, and they were able to beat the keeper. Dixie State had a couple of golden uh, opportunities to equalize and maybe even take the lead. After that, it was not to not to be. Dixie State twelve shots, four on goal, just couldn't find the back of the net. Um, that coupled with Angelo State. Uh, kind of Cinderella-ing, is that a verb? Can I use that like that? Cinderella-ing sure. through the Lone Star Conference Tournament. Uh, they were unranked in the region rankings. They win the Lone Star Conference Tournament. Dixie State sitting that sixth and final spot in the South Central region is bumped out. They're the odd team out. That's happened to basketball before in the past too. They do not make the South Central Regional, but still a young team, a very bright future. Uh, nothing to hang their heads about in Coach Lucy's first year. You can see with the young team that he has, the foundation that he's building, and, and he's even said before, too, we're good this year, but just wait until next year and, and the year after. This team's going to be really, really good. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there's uh, you know certain intangibles you can look at in this team. They've got the scoring with Whitley Johns. They've got the defense. We saw that all season long because how many shutouts did they have? And they've got all the intangibles that you'd want in a team going forward. I have uh, the utmost confidence that they'll be uh, a tremendous team going forward, and I can't wait till next season starts. Should also mention real quickly before the break, women's basketball opened its season last night with an exhibition up at BYU in Provo. Uh, they hung close through the first quarter and even into the second quarter, BYU pulled away in the second half for an 83-56 exhibition win over the Trailblazers. London Pavlika, 13 points on four of six shooting from the field, two of three from the outside. Rochelle Blazard, 11 points, and she was also four of six from the field. Those are both new players. Uh, Pavlika is a freshman. Michelle Blazard, a junior transfer from USU Eastern. Uh, so this season is looking up. The Trailblazers, we'll talk about a little bit later in the show, and their first uh, regular season game on Saturday, hosting Northern New Mexico College. Like I said, we'll break that down later in the show. We've got to take a timeout. When we come back, Dixie State senior quarterback Michael Sanders joins us. We sit down with Sanders to talk about the game on Saturday, talk about some of the adversity that he's been through uh, this year, and also look ahead to that Adam State game as well. How does a team come off the high of beating a, the sixth ranked team in the country and then turn around and still have to play another game on Saturday? All that coming up with Michael Sanders here on Trailblazer Weekly after this timeout. Okay, Talking Point Live, what are we going to be doing the next few weeks? Well, the next few weeks uh, coming up before the election, we're going to be talking about drilling down a little bit on um, what this whole Russian meddling means, especially from an organic standpoint, and did that really have an effect 
on voting. Um, there's some pretty compelling evidence out there that says it did. So join us um, now until the right before the election. Right. Here. And you know what it means, and when you say what does it mean, it means how we talk about it and how we investigate it. Right. The critical right. thinking. The critical analysis it. of that. So yeah. join Jennifer Kohler and myself, Eric Young, on Talking Point live coming to you uh, on the CEC channel uh, at 9.30, 12.30, and 4.30 daily. Fast-paced family life in need of a slowdown? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you, instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. Trailblazer Weekly is presented by the Dixie State Campus Store, the official store for Trailblazer and Dixie State clothing, as well as cheap textbooks, discounted computers, and supplies for students. They're located in the second floor of the Gardner Center and are open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the week. Closed on Saturdays and Sundays, you can stop by any time because they'll be loaded with great Trailblazer swag all the time. The Dixie State football team is fresh off its biggest win in the D2 era as the Trailblazers defeated number six Colorado School of Mines 52-45 on Saturday. Here to help us break it down is senior quarterback Michael Sanders. Michael, we appreciate you stopping by. I know it's a busy time. You're getting ready for Adam State on Saturday. You've got team meetings and, and practice to, uh, to shuffle around. We appreciate you being here and stopping by and really helping us break down what was an extraordinary performance on Saturday. So thanks for being here. And first of all, let's just dive right into it. Let's, let's talk about the game. Um, you had a game similar to that a couple of weeks ago at Shadron State where it just seemed like everything you were throwing, you were, you were connecting on. Um, that game and then going into this game, is there a certain feeling that you have when you're going into those games that you just know that I'm going to have a big game today? Um, you know, we had a good game plan going into this week and going back to that Shadron week, we had a good game plan for that one as well. Um, you know, you never know how it's going to play out, but I felt that we had a great week of practice and had a lot of confidence going into the game, and I felt like our team had a lot of confidence, and, you know, Coach Roland called some great plays, and we executed, and ultimately we just made a lot of big plays down the stretch that, you know, pushed us over the edge. We noted on the broadcast several times, Drayson and I uh, called the games together on the online stream, and we had one other guy with us on Saturday as well, but we all noted on the broadcast just how how patient and how calm and collected you seemed back there in the pocket. Of course, your offensive line was giving you plenty of time to yeah. throw, but uh, I mean, what's going through your mind on something like that? Obviously, it's just, I'm sure it's click, 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 you know, checking your reads, but you know, are you thinking much or is it more just force of habit at that point as you surveying your options and seeing your guys downfield? Um, you know, a lot of thinking is pre-snap, and then once that ball snapped, it's kind of reacting and trusting what I saw pre-snap and trusting the reads. Um, but yeah, like you said, the offensive line, when they're giving you that much time to throw the football, I mean, you get pretty comfortable back there and it almost turns into a seven on seven drill. And, uh, you know, like I said, our guy just made a lot of big plays. Obviously, Michael, the, the numbers speak for themselves. 38, 31 completions on 48 attempts, uh, a record 553 yards. That's a school record for uh, yards in a game. Five touchdowns as well. Uh, I mean, the, the numbers are just off the charts, and, and obviously, you know, you had a, an amazing game. The thing that stands out, stands out to me is uh, your longest pass was only 41 yards, which may, on, a, on any other day, might be significant, but when you throw for 553 yards, normally you see one that's 80 or 90 yards, mm -hmm. but you were – uh, very, very consistent in the length of passes as far as being able to read the field at different lengths. Talk to you a little bit about how it is to have a wide receiver core that you can trust in and be able to be consistently spread the ball throughout multiple different receivers. Yeah, you know, obviously some of our guys had some big days like Dewan and uh, Xavier had a big day as well. But honestly, whoever's out there, I have a lot of trust in to make the play for me. And I think the way our offense works, we really don't try to you know, put guys in there and try to force feed the ball to them. We're just kind of calling plays and whoever's in is going to make the play. And we really believe that. And our guys have done a great job of that all year of just whoever's up, make the big play for us when we need it. 
You mentioned Dewan. I can't. We'd be remiss if we didn't yeah. mention Dewan's numbers as well. Eleven receptions, two hundred forty-one of those five hundred fifty-three yards, and uh, three touchdowns. Also, uh, we talked about in the broadcast almost every big play. Every time there was a, a third down or maybe a third down and long, even a fourth down. I think there was one in there. Mm -hmm. It seemed like every crucial play or every step in that game. You connected with Dewan Dantzler. Mm -hmm. What did he mean for you in that game? Did you guys go into it saying, "Hey, we think we have a matchup we can exploit"? Uh, was there something like that before the game, or did you just kind of feel it in the game that he was having uh, an awesome game? Yeah, I mean, he's been playing well most this year, and uh, when we got into the game, it just kind of kept working out where he was my first read, and he gets open a lot, so it makes my job a lot easier, and then he can go up and make the big play for me and come down with the football. Um, so, you know, you know, it's one of those things where we get flown in the game and he just keeps winning on his routes and he keeps making them plays for me. So it kind of becomes one of those things where, you know, it's kind of second nature just to look at him and he's winning, so I'll give him a chance. Take me through, uh, you know, the, the roller coaster of emotions, I'm sure, not only just you, everyone on the sideline, you drive down yeah. the field. Unfortunately, you know, the, the field goal attempt sails wide. Um, and so there's that, you know, drop and emotions and then Abraham Reinhardt gets the interception and you know that you're going to have at least one or two, three, maybe three more shots at this thing. In fact, we noted on the broadcast, okay, now they can kind of sit back and, and do what they want to do and throw mm -hmm. the ball around rather than being cramped up against the goal line. But take me through that roller coaster of emotions and what's going through your mind as soon as you see Reinhardt get that pick and you know that you're going right back out on the field. Yeah, well, you know, as soon as I saw the field goal just miss, um, I started telling our guys get ready for overtime because, I mean, there's only 30 seconds left. I thought they'd probably just run the ball out and get into overtime with no timeouts left. So I was telling our guys, you know, stay in it, stay in it. We got overtime coming, and the next thing you know, it, the ball's right in Abe's hands and grabbing my helmet, and we're back on the field, and then we called a great play, and Xavier won on his route and made a great play for us. So it, it's just uh, you got to try to stay calm, and. Obviously, that's a big jolt of energy when we see the interception. But uh, yeah, you got to try to stay calm in those moments because, like I said, I thought we were going to overtime for sure. Of course, earned your second uh, RMAC Offensive Player of the Week award in, in the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, not only did you set you know, the single game passing record, but it was, it was your record that you broke from a couple of weeks ago. For, so congratulations on that. But uh, obviously, you're in season. I'm sure those awards are probably kind of nice to think about. I mean, how much does that actually mean? Or is this just kind of like, oh, well, that's nice. Move on to the next game. Um, I mean, I, it's cool getting the awards. I kind of think it's uh, a bigger deal for our offense as a whole because obviously, it takes a lot of people for one player to have that kind of game, and obviously I'm not doing that if the offensive line's not holding up. And like we've talked about, the receivers making big plays and the running backs, you know, opening it up. So um, I think it's just kind of cool in general for our offense to kind of get the recognition that we've had players that have made big plays for us. And um, you know, it is cool. Probably after the season, I'll enjoy it a little bit more. But right now, we're just trying to get ready to go win another football game on Saturday afternoon. Absolutely, and let's let's step away from just that game necessarily, and and talk about uh, the year in general. I know, I mean, you're here in, in 2017. Had to redshirt after playing a year at Idaho State, having a year off in between. Then you had to redshirt last year. I mean, so it had been quite a while since you've been on a football field. You put in all that work, uh, get into fall camp, and the first day of fall camp. Um, you know, you're injured. And, and at first, it's like, is he going to be able to play? Is he not? You're able to get back. I think Black Hill State was yeah. your first, first game back. Um, you end up throwing a game-winning touchdown in that game. We want to talk about roller coaster, roller coaster of emotions. I mean, you work your tail off to get back mm -hmm. in this game, overcome some adversity, and then you throw the game-winning touchdown in your first game back. I mean, maybe take me through that play and, and what you're thinking. I know that's kind of cliche to ask, but what, what's, what's going through your mind in that moment right there as you work through all that adversity, you're back on the field, you throw the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, it was just a crazy game there also. I mean, Trent Darns played an awesome game for us. He got banged up there at the end. And then they told me, you know, you're up. We need you here to take us down the field. Trent can't go. So, you know, I was just thinking, whatever I got to do to win this game to help us, you know, finally, you know, be able to play for Dixie State. It's been such a long journey coming. Um, I just wanted to help us win in any way I can. We get down the field, guys made big plays for us, and then uh, we kind of got them on a little uh, uh, no play, try to get them off sides, and they jumped, and then just threw it out to Connor and let him make the play. So it, it was definitely a, a whirlwind of emotions and uh, a game I'll never forget also. Uh, speaking of uh, you know, the, the, the great season you've had so far, obviously you know you can't get a whole lot higher than beating the sixth-ranked team in the country, but you still have work to do in Adams State. 
uh, this weekend. Looking forward to that game. Uh, how do you kind of kind of get out of the mode of like, hey, we just won the biggest game in this school's program's history to, okay, now we got to go win one more, and you still have the opportunity to set another kind of benchmark with seven wins in a season. That's never been done mm -hmm. in, in the Division Two area. So how do you kind of recover from that huge victory and going to Adams State thinking, hey, we got one more job to do? Yeah, I think it's going to start with leaning on the other seniors and leaders on the football team to kind of, you know, get everybody back under control this week at practice and make sure they understand we still have one more game and having seven wins in a season is a very big deal for this program. So I think the leadership on the team is strong enough where we can kind of get everybody back under control and kind of put that game to the side for now and get focused on an Adams State team and be able to go on the road and win a big game again. Obviously, we, we talked about it, Carrick mentioned it a minute ago, you're, you know, you're a transfer uh, from uh, Idaho State and obviously uh, you, know, you had a pretty successful uh, you know, time there. And just wanted to ask you, you know, what about uh, you know, maybe Coach, Coach McClure or this football team or Dick St. George, what, what about this uh, program did you want to say, hey, I, I, I want to uproot myself from Idaho State and come mm -hmm. down here to Dick State? What about this program made you want to do that? Um, I just think you can feel the buzz and the energy when you come to this campus and you come to St. George. Um, it's just a great place to live. The university is thriving. It's growing so quickly. Um, you can see with the athletic program how fast they were growing and all the big stuff happening with us. And, you know, Coach McClure just had a great vision that I kind of believed in and I trusted him and I trusted, you know, the staff here to come here and uh, hopefully leave an impact on this university and the athletic program and the football team in specific. Well, that you, you certainly have for sure left an impact on, on, on this program and, and all of us just seeing kind of what you've had to fight through to get back to the field. I know it's been inspiring to me, so I, I thank you for that, for your example and, and, and your courage and, and overcoming the things you've had to overcome. Um, let's wind this thing down with some fun. Let's have some fun. Everyone that comes in, we like to play you know, some rapid fire questions and, and just get to know you a little bit better. So let's start with uh, maybe favorite football player let's go specific favorite quarterback in the nfl Who, who's your go-to guy in the uh, nfl right now it's got to be current player right now no, or yeah. all time let's go current first okay. and then all time uh current i'll go with aaron Rodgers for sure i okay. uh, love watching him play he's i mean he's one of the best to ever do it and then of all time peyton manning for sure oh, that's a good pick yeah, okay. i'm a big peyton, peyton manning, manning fan no, myself yeah. Um, what about teams? Do you have a team right now that Arizona you Cardinals for that's, sure. That's the From hometown Phoenix, team, right? Yeah. Yeah. Been a Cardinals fan my whole life. We're not doing too well this year, but stay true to my team. But you got, I mean, Josh Rosen. You got, you just released Sam Bradford, so that's yeah. Josh Rosen's job. Got to be happy about that. Uh, let's get your uh, Super Bowl pick for this year. Obviously, there's a lot of good teams. Saints, sir, just beat the yeah, Rams. Yeah. The Rams pretty good. Patriots are always good. Who do you like, like this year for the Super Bowl? <sighs> Man, if the Saints could play every single game at home, I think they'd be the for sure pick. Um, but it's hard to go against Tom Brady and the Patriots. They always just seem to find a way to make it there and get the job done. So I'll go with the Patriots. Patriots. All right, we'll, we'll hold you to that then. <laughs> uh, one last question about, about the game. Uh, you completed that game-winning touchdown pass uh, to uh, Xavier Smith. He makes the catch. It wasn't on camera, but a lot of people still saw it. You kind of dropped to your knees and pointed up at the sky. What was going through your mind? at that point, just to know that yeah. at that point, I mean, they were gonna get the ball back at least, you know, yeah. for a few more seconds, but at that point, you knew you pretty, pretty much had it wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, I felt like the game was over at that point. I feel like we just kinda, we had the game locked and it's just so much emotion, especially on senior day. Yeah. Um, our team fought so hard. I felt like everybody in our program fought so hard. The coaches worked their butts off all week and the players just gave it everything we had. So just a lot of emotion, especially with the year that I've had personally in the team. Um, just to get that win was something special that I know I'll never forget, and I think a lot of guys in the, on the football team will never forget as well. Well, it's a pretty incredible story, if you ask me. I mean, we ought to put together our own type of, you know, like 30 for 30 type, type story about it because it's <laughs> been that kind of a journey over the, the redshirt year and this year, you know, mm -hmm. getting in and being able to play. So our time has gone here in the segment, but we appreciate you taking some time with us and yeah. just know that we're all pulling for you, and, and we're going to be watching that game in, in Alamosa on Saturday with, with great interest. and and uh, hoping you can come back with that seventh win and, sure. and leave another mark on, on the Dixie State football program. Thanks for having me, guys. So, Thanks so much. Thank you. we got to take that break. After the timeout, Drayson and I had an opportunity to stop by the women's volleyball match, the Armac quarterfinal match last night. We will chat with uh, the head coach, Robin Felder, who was named co-coach of the year, as well as defender Lauren Gamble, who was named Armac Conference defender of the year. Our conversation after their game last night with them 
right after this timeout on Trailblazer Weekly. So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Today is the beginning of a bright new future for this country. All I won't live a life on my knees. The voters are coming. Trailblazer Weekly is the official show of Dixie State Athletics. You can keep up with all the Trailblazer athletic action with pictures, stats, and game recaps at DixieStateAthletics.com. While you're at it, don't forget you can follow our show on Twitter as well with at DSU Blazer Weekly. And welcome back inside Trailblazer Weekly. We are inside the Student Activity Center after the volleyball team's 3-1 win over UC Colorado Springs. The volleyball team actually making their way currently over to Golden Colorado for the semifinals and final rounds of the RMAC tournament. That's why we're here in the Student Activity Center filming this interview tonight. We're excited to be able to have head coach Robin Felder and middle blocker Lauren Gamble with us. It's been quite the week for Dixie State Volleyball and for you two individually, but we'll talk a little bit about that as well as, as the team as a whole. First of all, congratulations on the win tonight. Let's break that down first. Obviously, you take the first two sets. What was a little bit different, Coach? We'll start with you in that third set than in the first two sets and then the decisive fourth set. Yeah, I think Colorado just came out a little bit tougher. I mean, they were had their backs against the wall, and they just got some momentum going their way. They had some big blocks and some big plays, and we just got a little bit rattled. And then our ball control kind of fell apart a little bit. Um, but luckily in set four, we were able to kind of get back on track and, and get the win. Of course, always fun to play in front of the home crowd. Talk about how loud and, and just how much of a factor that, you know, you get those football players in here, you get all the, all the other teams and the fans supporting. How big of a factor is that in here inside the, the Student Activity Center? Yeah, I mean, that's what we love about the SAC is that it's close. Everybody's right on top of everybody. And when we have the football team and the basketball team, I mean, it's just loud. And it's amazing. I'm so grateful for those guys for coming out. Um, but really, our fans have been awesome all year, completely rowdy, totally setting the stage for us in the sack to be successful. Coach, now you obviously you head uh, off to Golden, Colorado, face uh, kind of a, a rivalry game against Mesa once again. Obviously, uh, always a good uh, game against those guys. What are you kind of looking forward to that game going in forward into the, into the conference tournament? And obviously, most importantly, the Mesa game, though. Yeah, I mean, we've just been saying we need to win one game. And tonight it was we got to beat Springs, and um, now we look on to Mesa. So I think the biggest thing with Mesa is, yes, we've already beat them twice, but it's the playoffs. Anybody can beat anybody. Um, and so we're just looking forward to seeing them again. We know what they do. We, you know, we've played them already, um, but we've got to play our game if we're going to beat them. How, how easy is it to game plan against a team that you already played and beaten twice? Obviously, a different game, a different you know, match can always end up differently, but how does it help? You know, having that experience, and then also, how much does it help having a, a four-time, maybe even more? Four, I mean, losing count now, uh, defender of the week in Lauren Gamble over here. How much does that help you? Yeah, I mean, when we played Mesa last time, their strength is definitely in their middles, and that is why we have low. Um, <laughs> and so, I think last time she had an epic 11-block game. I mean, she just blocked so well, um, and against the best middle in the in the conference, she was the all player, you know, all conference player of the year. I mean, Lowe just completely annihilated her last time we played them. So we're confident in what we can do, but we've got to just play consistent volleyball. 
We're here inside the Student Activity Center with volleyball head coach Robin Felder and with middle blocker Lauren Gamble. Lauren, let's bring you into the interview. Excited right, to have you here. And first of all, congratulations. Drayson mentioned, you know, how many uh, Defender of the Weeks you had, and Thank that's you. all culminated into a Defender of the Year award. Uh, I'm sure you've got bigger and better things on your mind right now with the RMAC tournament still going and the yeah. South Central Regionals looming here pretty closely. But first of all, congratulations on that. Just talk about what that means, uh, not only to you, but to bring that award back to the team and, and to know that the defense has been a staple of this team all year long, and you're able to bring that award not just to you, but back to the team. I'm just so excited to get that award. It literally means so much. And to have my team back me up on it, they all were so congratulatory of it, and it's just so awesome. Of course, we had you on the show, I think, after your first Defender of the Week award, mm -hmm. which seems like forever ago now. And now after you know two, three, four, five, and like Trayson said, we, we lost count. We've got you on the show here today. What is it that you like about playing defense so much? Obviously, uh, you know, there's, there's the people that get the, the kills, that, that get kind of the glory, and, and then, you know, you're playing defense. What do you like about playing defense and, and making those stops so much? Well, it's just so fun to be able to shut down their hitters. Even, like, the uh, middle for Colorado Mesa is the best middle in the conference, one player of the year, and just to completely shut her down is almost better than getting a kill myself, just to shut her down. You know, obviously, to receive you know the Defensive Player of the Year award, you have to be good, but you have to be consistently good. And I think you know, a lot of players can be good for you know, the first half of the season, the second half, or individual games, but you've been consistent throughout the entire season. How have you been able to do that, and, and kind of what factors have gone into that? Um, I Honestly, I think that getting extra reps has helped a lot. I come in with the setters and get extra blocking reps, extra hitting reps, and I think that's helped a ton, just getting that extra little bit. Talk a little bit about, I had Coach embarrass you a little bit, so I'll have you embarrass Coach a little bit. Talk a little bit about how much Coach Felder has helped you uh, this season and, and to be able to you know, perform as well as you have. She's helped me so much, especially with my confidence. I feel like that's what I kind of lacked last year was just confidence with blocking and hitting and everything, but I think she's really just helped me develop my confidence as a player, and she's just been such an awesome coach for me. Perfect lead in to, uh, to the next question. And it's, it's not just your players bringing in some of the individual award coach. You've uh, won the uh, Coach of the Year award, co coach of the year, if we're going to have to be technical. But in, in our mind, you are the coach of the year here inside the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Uh, what does that mean, mean to you to be able to do that in the first year in the conference? Uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. I mean, it really is a testament to the program and just honestly, I told all my assistants, this is ours. This is not mine um, because they all put in so much time, so much effort from my managers to my assistants to just everybody. It's totally a group effort. So I'm just so grateful for everybody. What makes this year's team special? From, from where you can see it in your vantage point at, as a coach. Obviously, you've coached many different teams, had many different successes, and, and now this team is going to rank among the best of those teams, tying the, the single season win mark tonight and an opportunity to, to do more going forward. What makes this team so special this year? Yeah, I think I've had teams in the past that I've always kind of been like, are we going to bring it tonight? Are we not? And I just never have a doubt with these girls. I'm like, she's a fighter, she's a fighter, she's a fighter. So, you know, we talked earlier this season about who would you want to go to war with? And it's it would be this team 100%. I mean, these girls just don't buckle under pressure. When the pressure gets higher, they perform better. So that's a good feeling when you're headed into some big games, big crowds, just important things that I've got a team that's going to go to war. Coach, uh, I mean, you mentioned it. I mean, this team has been, you know, amazing all season long, and that's a tribute to you and your staff, and obviously the players. Uh, what? How far can this team go? Obviously, you have loftier goals than you know, just winning one match here in the the conference tournament. How far can this team go? What is their kind of expectations going forward? Yeah, you know, I mean, I just told them in the locker room, I, I don't I don't want to overlook anything, but when I look at the top eight teams in the nation, I think we're right there. I mean, we've got the defense, we have the hitters. Um, it just is a matter of performing when we need to. And that really is the difference between a championship team and, and a, and a non-championship team is when the pressure's high and the stakes are on, can your team perform and play well? And I've just got kids that do that. So I feel really confident moving forward. I mean, who knows what can happen um, but I think I've got the kids that that want it uh, if you had to say I feel like I know what you're gonna say but if you had to kind of pinpoint maybe in one word or one phrase what's gonna be the most important thing going forward what would that be 
Um, I think for us, it's just, you know, we talk a lot about just mental work and mental training, and we play in red a lot, which is just aggressive and intense and feisty, and sometimes we kind of lose our heads a little bit. So I think moving forward, we need to play in blue. Blue is just focused, confident. Uh, it's the zone where we're just firing in on all cylinders, but we're not kind of losing our heads. So moving forward, nothing but blue. Let's bring Lauren back in here. Is that we're getting a little short on time here in the segment, but a couple more questions for Lauren. Uh, not only have you played well here behind us here in the Student Activity Center, but you've played well on the road this year too, and that's been one thing about this team is that it doesn't matter where you're playing, you, you've played well. Uh, what does the team do to stay to stay loose, to stay ready to play on, on the road, and you know some long bus rides and here in, here in the Armac? What does the team do to be ready to play while you're on the road? Well, we're always goofing around, having fun with each other. I think like the team bond the team chemistry that's really where we get that is on those long bus rides and stuff so that's really where we come together as a team I'm familiar with some of those bus, ride, bus rides, excuse me, having traveled with the football team for their first two years in the RMAC. So I, I'm familiar with some of those, and I, and I know that they can be quite lengthy. I know that you're probably excited to, I mean, we would probably rather play it here, but it probably excited to be able to go back to to, uh, to Golden, Colorado, and, and hopefully can get one of those matches that, that slipped away uh, back. Is the team excited to be able to obviously, I mean, to get through to that title, you're going to have to beat Colorado Mesa and then probably Colorado School of Mines one more time. How excited is the team, Lauren, to be able to, to continue so going stoked. forward? We're so stoked to play them against revenge time for, <laughs> <laughs> for Dixie State. It's going to be awesome. All right. Well, we appreciate you two taking some time with us after the match tonight. I know we, we maybe cut some, some post-match talking with family and friends down, but uh, we'll save that for after we bring home some, some hardware next go. week and get ready for the South Central Regional. But uh, uh, Volleyball head coach Robin Felder, as well as middle blocker Lauren Gamble joining us here on Trailblazer Weekly. We appreciate their time and wish you the best of luck in uh, Golden, Colorado on Friday and, and, and Saturday. Uh, yes, I said Saturday because we're expecting to see that second day as well. So big thank you to you two and good luck to the volleyball team going forward. we got to take our next break. When we come back, we are going to wrap things up with a weekend preview. Look ahead at this weekend's Dixie State games and put a bow on the show. There's more Trailblazer Weekly right after this. Do you think people like John McCain and other people would just sit there quietly on the sides? Well, and no, that I've... And that many Republican activists would refrain from registering their disapproval in the peanut gallery? Some might argue that Republican activists is an oxymoron. Oh, I don't think so. Okay. I think there's a lot of activism. Oh. But do you see what see I'm it. saying? If you just flip it right over on its head. I would like to flip it on its head. And in fact, I'm already doing that because my own position is free speech is free speech. Okay. And I'm, I'm kind of advocating for something that I'm really not supporting in this respect. As far as protesting or not protesting and being able to recognize your audience. What we need on either side, I don't care where you're coming from, is the ability to recognize the audience. There is a place where young and old make connections. Where kids feel like grown-ups. And grown-ups feel like kids. There is a place where beauty arises in contrast. Where wonder is universal. And laughter, second nature. There is a place where friends find a future. Families find each other. And feelings find their home. There is a place. The Dixie State Stretch Internet Portal and the RMAC Network is your home for all Trailblazer Athletics live streaming. Don't miss a second of the action. You can watch DSU games home and away at portal.stretchinternet.com slash Dixie State. That's portal.stretchinternet.com slash Dixie State. Another show is almost in the books, and you know what that means. It's time to put a bow on today's show with a look ahead for a weekend preview, starting with volleyball. The Trailblazers head to Golden, Colorado for the RMAC Tournament semifinals and finals should they get there. They will face off against Colorado Mesa on Friday, uh, a matchup that we've anticipated uh, all season long, and it's certainly lived up to the hype in both the two matches earlier in the season. Obviously, the Trailblazers uh, victorious in both of those games. Uh, but, uh, you know, like we mentioned earlier in the show, Carrick, 
tough to beat a team three times in a row, especially in the same season. And Colorado Mesa, uh, Colorado Mesa, a formidable foe uh, in the semifinal matchup. Trailblazers will need to play a very good game in order to reach the finals uh, of the RMAC tournament. Oh, well, there's no question about it. Uh, the first two times these teams played, first time was here at Dixie State. Uh, the other time was on the road in Grand Junction. So they proved that they can beat this Colorado Mesa team uh, anywhere. Now they get to play the game on, on a neutral site. Uh, you know, although Dixie State has to travel much farther uh, to the game than Colorado Mesa, uh, they should be ready to go still. They've proved, like I said, that they can beat this team uh, pretty much anywhere they play them. And they'll need to bring their, their A game to this game on Friday. No looking ahead to the conference championship uh, title game on Saturday uh, and looking ahead to a possible rematch with uh, Colorado School of Mines. Uh, really, you look at the possible opponents for that championship game, though. I just said that we weren't going to look ahead to it. We can. <laughs> they can't. They got to meet. They got to beat Colorado Mesa first. Uh, should they advance the volleyball team to the final on Saturday, they'll be playing either Colorado School of Mines or MSU Denver. Uh, uh, both teams with which I think the Trailblazers have a bone to pick because they feel like they should have won the game against Colorado School of Mines in Golden. And then you end up tying and sharing the conference title after dropping a game to MSU Denver inside the Student Activity Center, which was a rarity this season. They just did not lose uh, inside the sack. Uh, that was the only loss, in fact, inside the sack for the Trailblazers this season was to MSU Denver. So I think Dixie State has plenty of motivation going into this weekend. Uh, it will be tough to get out of that semifinal round on Friday, though. If there is a team, like we talked about earlier in the show, that's up to the task, it's this team. Coach Felder will have this team ready to go. Uh, you know, it's that whole... Uh, you know what was it with the Golden State Warriors a few few years ago? You know, 72 and and 10 or whatever don't mean a thing without the ring. Maybe that was the Chicago Bulls way back in the day. Uh, but you know, a great regular season is not going to mean much if you bow out early in in the RMAC tournament. And they have lofty goals. Coach Felder told us on that interview that they feel like they match up well with any team in the country, and so they'll be tested on Friday and hopefully uh, they'll be able to get through that into the title game on Saturday. Uh, if they get to that title game, I think they're pretty much a lock to get into the South Central region, although at this point I think they're in anyway at number four. Yeah, and it's always a good thing to have uh, something to play for at the end of the season. Obviously, you have a team that's very, very motivated right now in this uh, women's volleyball team. You know, they're going into this matchup, like you said, with a lot of kind of revenge. You know, Lauren Gallon talked about that in the interview we just did in the last segment. They have some revenge on their mind, obviously, looking forward uh, should they reach that finals matchup against MSU Denver or Colorado School of mines. Not only that, they have they, they still have something to play for. Now you can obviously right now they're the number four seed in the in the South Central region rankings. But if you go through this tournament, you beat Colorado Mesa on Friday, and then you play the winner of C uh, you know, Colorado School of Mines or MSU Denver. If you win that match as well, if you win this RMAC tournament, you could possibly bump uh, Colorado School of Mines down from that three spot, and then you would have a better seating there going forward into the South Central Regional. So that's something that you can look forward to and play for as well. And and like we've seen all season through, uh, all, all through this season with this volleyball team, they are determined and they are very, very tough to beat. And I would not want to play them if I was any one of these three teams we've been talking about in this segment. I wouldn't want to play them uh, going forward in any sort of capacity, whether it be home game, neutral site, wherever. I wouldn't want to play these guys. One thing that's certain, uh, it, it, you can. There's that saying with brackets. You know, the the quarterfinals went just straight chalk or sharpie. However, how, you know, whether you write it on a board or on on a paper, uh, the top four seeds all won uh, their games. So you've got one playing the four and the two playing the three. And they're the you know Captain Obvious over here. I know the four best teams in the RMAC are the four teams that are left. So you're gonna have. Uh, very, very entertaining matches, three of them. The two semifinals on Friday and then the, the title match on Saturday. It's going to be uh, very, very entertaining. And, you know, one that, you know, Dixie State was really not that far off from hosting this thing. But, uh, you know, stay tuned. We'll have all the updates for you on that at DixieStateAthletics.com. Also on Twitter, 
at Dixie Athletics. We'll have all the, the updates, so follow us and stay with us throughout the weekend. We'll also have live stat and live video links on the volleyball schedule at DixieStateAthletics.com as well so that you can watch those games and follow along and keep up just like the rest of us. So good luck to the volleyball team as they uh, embark on their first trip to the semifinals in the RMAC tournament. Let's transition to the football field with just a few minutes left here in the show. Dixie State after their monumental win on Saturday against number six Colorado School of Mines. They will close the 2018 season on the road with a battle against Adams State in Alamosa, Colorado. They load up the bus for one more long RMAC bus ride to take on the number one passing offense in all of Division II. This Adams State Grizzly squad, a very high octane offense, throws the ball just as well as this Colorado School of Mines team that the Trailblazers just defeated. The one difference is uh, Adam State scores a lot of points. Like I mentioned, they're, they're top 10 in scoring offense and leading the nation in, in passing in Division II. However, they rank dead last in scoring defense in all of Division II as well, giving up uh, just over 40 points per game. So there's yards to be gained, points to be scored against this Adam State team. Uh, that's why the Grizzlies, if you look at their schedule, they've played almost every single one of their games they've played. It doesn't matter who they're playing. Uh, it's been a good old fashioned shootout where it's, you know, like a 55 52 type game. And they've been on the, the winning end of those and they've been on the losing end of some of those games. And no doubt it's their senior day. They'll be ready to try and, and send their team out with a win. Dixie State, though, an opportunity to get to that record seventh win. They've never won more than six games as a D2 member in the regular season. They hope to be able to clinch that on Saturday. Yeah, and there's a lot to play for. You mentioned the chance to get to seven wins on the season. That would be a monumental uh, accomplishment as well. But not only that, uh, a few personal uh, records. Uh, Say J. Luongo is needing just a handful of yards to yeah. become – Dixie State's all-time leading rusher. Uh, I'm confident he'll be able to do that. He just needs what well, you probably know the number more than I do. It's right around 50. 50 yards. Somewhere. Uh, so I mean, I'm, it's not exactly 50, but right around there. Right around there. And I'm confident he'll get that going. Hopefully that can propel the run game that's kind of been lackluster in the last couple of weeks uh, going forward. Hopefully the run game can propel them and then obviously their defense, which has been pretty good all season. Um, hopefully they can stop that uh, high-powered passing offense. You know, the good thing about that is, like you mentioned, is that they – just played the number two passing offense in the country. Now they have to, uh, you know, play the number one off passing offense in the country as well. So hopefully they've got they've got a good, uh, you know, blueprint as to what they need to do going into that game, and hopefully they can execute it like they did yeah. last weekend. I like what you mentioned about Sage Luongo. Um, you know, coming in on that rushing record, I'm confident that he'll do it on Saturday. When you look at what teams have been doing against Adam State on the ground, uh, this is a Dixie State team that is been trying to get that run game going again and in this game they'll have that option of run and pass uh, because this Adam State defense right now is giving up 508 yards per game total offense um, through the air 257 and on the ground 251 yards per game so there's there's opportunity to draw all sorts of stuff up and and to be able to to excel both on the ground and through the air and, and I hope, um, uh, I mean, this would take a game of over 200 yards rushing. We haven't seen one yet this season. Uh, Sage Luongo is, is also, you know, 200 and some change away from Dixie State's first 1,000-yard rushing season. I mean, it, it's enough past 200 that, you know, it may not happen. But if he gets loose and that running game gets going, if it's that whole mantra, if, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it, then who, who knows? He could go off. He could do that as well. But with, with some of the opportunities to get that run game going, I expect Sage Luongo to have a big game on Saturday. And what a way to end the season with back-to-back -back victories to finish for the football team. But to the basketball court now, uh, as the women's basketball team opens the 2018-2019 season at home this Saturday with a matchup against Nor Northern New Mexico College and NA. I a opponent, Carrick. We're all looking forward to the basketball season rolling around, and obviously with the women's basketball team hosting their opening matchup at home uh, this Saturday uh, with a matchup against the Northern New Mexico College. 
Uh, it's going to be a great, uh, a great atmosphere, a great game to get going, and obviously with a team that's loaded like this uh, with, with talent, I'm looking forward to what this season has in store for the women's basketball team. Yeah, Coach Gustin has, has really been able to build the team that he wants to have here at Dixie State over the last couple of seasons, and this team, it, it's young but it's loaded with talent and, and some of the best talent the state of Utah and even, even Nevada and, and some of those uh, bordering states have to offer. So come on out to the Burns Arena on Saturday evening at 5.30 p.m., uh, the first home basketball game of the season, men's or women's, and the Trailblazers will take on, like you said, NAI opponent, Northern New Mexico. Uh, we'll have that uh, game for you. Uh, on the Dixie State Stretch Internet stream as well as I think Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. So, and stay tuned to DixieStateAthletics.com again for all of those results as well. Our time is gone. Another edition of Trailblazer Weekly is in the books. A reminder, you can watch the show, uh, this episode or any others on demand at YouTube.com slash Dixie State Athletics. For Drayson Ball and the entire CEC TV crew and Radio Dixie 91.3 crew, I'm Carrick Sagmiller. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Go Trailblazers.